Okay, welcome to Ontario Ship Chasers. And we have our normal chaser. Natasha. And a guest chaser today. Sandra. And uh, yes, believe it or not, it is winter. You don't see a whole lot of snow. Uh, we'll take some pictures of some dirty piles of snow for those people. Not from southwestern Ontario. So yeah, we have only had a, a couple of snowstorms and most of the snow has melted. It is a week into February, and what we're down here to do is to film some uh, wintertime shots of the canal, not having any water in it. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to show the summertime shot, and then we're going to show the, the current winter shot behind us. The canal leading out to Lake Ontario, and of course still has water in it because there's nothing to keep Lake Ontario from coming up this far. The spot where we're at is one of Natasha's favorite uh, filming spots and she'll give you a little brief talk about it here. So I usually stand where y'all can't see but this is where I usually get the shot where I have the camera right through the fence and you just see the ship going by and it looks like it's on a tripod or something but I just have really steady hands unlike dad and uh, <laughs> he usually drops me off here and he drives down there to get the ship coming off the lake. Here is a set of little gates that we never knew about that's stopping the water um, from the lake going into lock one. So here's another view of the gates that Natasha recorded from basically up there. And you can see the water being held back and then we have the main gates that are used during the shipping season. And actually, they're not 100% closed. They're open about a foot. Let's see. There, you can see they're open about a foot. And then we have this building here. It's discharging water. I don't know if that's coming from the upper end of the, the if, it, if it's drainage from the canal or possibly from Heddell shipyards. So we're just upstream of Lock 1 and we're looking at Heddle Shipyards and the Tadasac and the Saint Laurent are in dry dock and there's something that we normally can't see is the doors to the lock chambers to the to the dry dock and you can see that the one on the left opens on hinges and the one on the right, actually, it slides to one side. And in front, you can just see a little bit of the water that's, already, that's, that's still in the canal. Everywhere along the canal, you can see there's uh, work crews making repairs and things. So we're looking down into lock number one from the drawbridge that's right above it. You can see we've got some workmen in there doing some welding on the gate. Um, 
there's quite a bit of maintenance all up and down the canal here you can see he's on some sort of scaffolding welding away it's really cool because we can see internal structures inside of the canal and the locks we can't normally see um, you can, the lower part of the lock is so much deeper than the upper part. One of the other things they seem to be doing, at least on lock one, is repainting a lot of the railings so you get a nice coat of fresh new yellow paint. They're doing some work here on the other door, and of course, you can see they can move independently if they have to. Uh, now, Sandra noticed these these things here, which I can only describe as I don't know dragon's teeth. Um, they're arranged in an arc that basically passes under the end of the lock gates. I I don't know if they're for temporary support if necessary, and I don't know if they're under every single lock, but. They are quite interesting to look at. To the left you can see the the stairways that the workmen are, are using to get up and down inside the lock. And a lot of the main concrete that the locks are made out of is over a hundred years old. Um, up here you can see They've chiseled away a lot of the concrete that's uh, spalled, and that's an area that they're going to be repairing. But yeah, they started building the canal in the 19-teens. So yeah, some of the oldest concrete is over 100 years old. Looking at the upstream side of the weir that sits next to lock number one, this maintains the water level in the canal. Uh, this area right here is where the water level is controlled going into the lower part of the canal. This area you see here is where they draw water into the locks. And this other view here, that vertical structure to the left. That leads into a small hydropower generator, and that's a trash rack. You can see all the crap that's stuck on it. And then you can see the opening there in the middle that's letting most of the water go through.
I'm walking towards the lower end of lock two. We don't usually film here as there's lots of trees. I like geese, so this is the geese moment in this video. On the right, you can see the lower gates, and that's the overflow. We're on the bridge at lock number two and we're looking upstream and there's not a whole lot to look here it's all pretty gray and foreboding and there's the drawbridge itself and the upper end of lock number two. Same features as lock number one. We have the trash rack over the um, inflow to the power plant. And, uh, you know, th this is the upstream side of what Natasha filmed on the other side. This is the chip stand where we like to eat lunch in the summertime. And it's just downstream of the QEW, the Queen Elizabeth Way. And that's the big bridge you can see in the distance. And of course, we're looking upstream towards Lock 3. And the Homer Bridge is a smaller bridge underneath it there. We've shifted about a half a kilometer upstream and we're now underneath the Queen Elizabeth Way. That's the major four lane or actually six lane highway in this part of Ontario. You can see the big rectangular uh, structures which basically protect the bridge abutments from potential collisions with ships.
In the distance, we can see the Homer Bridge, and it is a double leaf drawbridge. Um, we were hoping we were going to be able to shoot from it today, but unfortunately, it's undergoing some major renovations, uh, some repair work. Currently I am upstream of the Homer Bridge, which I am walking to right now. Dad and Sandra just dropped me off. There they are, nice and warm in the car. And that's lock three in the distance. And this is a nice close-up of the construction work on the bridge. This is where I'm usually filming, underneath the Homer Bridge. Right now there's construction, so it's closed, so Dad's not up there. But this is where I stand. We're now at the Glendale Bridge. We've chosen to skip over Lock 3 because we didn't think there was a, any good shots we could get of the drained canal from there. Where we are right now is the Grassy Knoll. And it's a good spot where you can pull off and watch ships go by. And a lot of people do. The main thing is don't leave your car and, and walk away from it. That's frowned upon.
Sandra and I have ventured out onto the Glendale Bridge in order to get these shots. And up there on the grassy knoll you can see our trusty little escape. And Natasha is over there somewhere getting her shots of the canal. Whereas, like we said, we're, we're braving the wind on the bridge. Right now I'm at the lower end of lock 4, uh, which is the bottom of the flight locks. I've filmed here a couple times. I like to get this shot of uh, the ship going by real close. This is the Happy River. To the right of me is the powerhouse building. And that's Glendale Bridge over there. Now there's this weird frothing. Me and Dad are unsure of what it is, so if y'all have any idea, you can stick it into the comments. We have a feeling it has something to do with the power plant. We're now at the lower end of Lock 7. This is the lower end of Lock 7 gates. And just to the left is the basin between the flight locks, that's lock 6, and lock 7. It's kind of a big open area where ships can pass. Here you can see the gates in the open position, and they're doing some maintenance work. And once again, there's, there's all kinds of goodies that we can't normally see. This I found interesting. I didn't realize that they had these wheels just at the pinch point at the entrance to the lock. It's kind of neat. Here is a bit of a climb, but it really is a rewarding place to shoot from. 
the nice thing is is you're almost kind of looking down at the oncoming ships at least the ones that are coming upstream and you can get some really interesting views here we're looking at the the upper gates of lock six I shot this from a little bit higher up the hill. down into the entrance of Lock 7. It's kind of sickening when you realize how tall this is. This is about the grandest view you're going to get of the basin between the flight locks and lock 7 without using a drone, and no, I don't have one, but this is a fantastic view and you can see everything from here. Both Natasha and I always thought that this segment here was a solid wall, but in fact, it's just basically a guardrail that's uh, that's mounted on a bunch of heavy pilings. In the summertime, you just assume that that's a solid wall. Here's another view that Natasha took. Finally, we're at the upper end of lock number seven. And these closed gates you're seeing are not the gates that are normally used when the lock is in service. You can see that those ones are a little bit farther back. As I understand it, these gates that are closed right now in, in the winter shots are basically the guard gates. They're the ones that protect the, the lower parts of the canal against flooding. Um, but right here they're using them basically to seal off the lower part of the canal. When we were there, the stop logs were not in use. You can see there's the canal right off to the, to the right, the water level is high. I've never seen these in the closed position. Mind you, we don't live here though.
The rest of the canal from Thoreau to Port Colborne does not get drained for the winter, but we decided to go to Port Colborne anyway to see all the ships tied up. Sit, Indy, sit. Good dog. <laughs> <laughs>